Hey everybody, Scott Spritzer here with Rafael Esparza. We are DocSports.com and we are talking week four in the NFL. Going to talk a little bit about the Joes and the pros where both sides have plunked their money down in the NFL for this upcoming week. And uh, right now it's been one-sided for two of the three weeks, so we'll talk about that. And we got a free play. We're going to give out a free play between the Bills and the Raiders. Game being played in Sin City on Sunday. Uh, before I get to all of that, though, we've got a little special offer that goes on at DocSports.com that you might want to pay attention to if you're not yet a member at Doc Sports. It's really cool. It's a great way to give Doc Sports a trial run if interested. All you got to do is click on the link below the video and you can get yourself set up for a free $60 account, which you can then use on any of our daily packages. That includes Raphael's, that includes mine, anybody on the roster at DocSports.com. And again, it all starts by clicking on that link below the video. All right, Raphael, and I, I guess I should say, ah, oh, yes, the NFL, the public's betting pay, uh, playground, and payground for that matter, as I almost said, 40 it slip. Uh, biggest public versus sharp games so far this first three weeks of the season. We saw the sharps come back a little bit in week two, Raphael, but in weeks one and in week three, we saw the public take four out of five of the biggest public versus sharp differentials on the card. We've seen the favorites of seven or more, which hit you know 57% against the spread last year, hitting 73% against the spread this season thus far. Favorites winning outright at a 72% clip this season. Teasers hitting like crazy for the general public. The overs have gone through the roof. After last night's game between the Broncos and the Jets, 30 and 19 to the over. I've been asked this a million times, and now I'm going to throw it at you. What's the cause? What is the cause for all of this? crazy results that we're seeing in the NFL. Well, I think COVID got the NFL defense. I think that's why the, one of the main reasons why. And let's face it, we've seen some bad tackling because of no preseason. We've seen some quarterbacks that maybe shouldn't have been the starter uh, that because of preseason. I think a lot of it, and I think the owners and even the players will probably have to relook on how they look at preseason games for what we've seen so far. I think that has a lot to do with it. And I'm not saying empty stadiums don't have anything to do. I think some players hate it. Some players probably don't even realize it. They're just so focused focused uh, but that could have a tense but I think a lot of especially the totals going over is preseason no preseason football yeah I think everything you said plus I do believe like the jumps the by the the defense the offsides penalties the offense moving a little bit too early at times the reason those numbers are down are partly because uh, there are no crowds or very small crowds in the stadiums that are allowing people to to watch the games in person I mean I'm watching that Monday night football game between the Chiefs and the Ravens and you know that would have been a madhouse under normal conditions. And Patrick Mahomes is audibleizing and calling plays out to his wideouts 20 yards away from him on each side of him. And he's doing it in a, in a, in a, in basically a, a normal conversation level of voice. It was kind of funny to watch him going, you know, all right, uh, split right, left, quad right, left on four. And I'm like, my gosh, he's talking to these guys like he's sitting two feet away from them. And I think that has a little bit to do with it all so everybody can hear the signals. Uh, but I think what you're saying is spot on. I mean, without that preparation time in August that we normally get, uh, there are a ton of missed tackles, missed reads by secondaries. And we're seeing what preseason means to the NFL. It's still fun, still exciting, but the defenses are a step behind. Let's talk about a, a defense that's been getting messed up week in, week out thus far, and that would be the Minnesota Vikings, who look like they could use a little more prep time. Uh, they're at Houston this week, down to three and a half in a lot of books as I'm checking my numbers in front of me. Still a couple of fours out there. They were four everywhere Houston was about, oh, 14, 15 hours ago. And Rafael, the public on Houston, over 60% of the tickets on the Texans. Sharp money is on the Vikings right now to the tune of about 65% of the money. And at least thus far, the movement has gone with the Sharps. Yeah, a little bit shocked. I mean, because let's face it, if you look at what Houston had to do just to get to 0-3, they played Pittsburgh at Pittsburgh. They played the Ravens. They played the Super Bowl champs and in their backyard. I mean, that's a tough schedule. So I think Houston, part of my French pops their cherry maybe this week and gets their first W. Uh, and I don't understand why the Sharps are betting Kirk Cousins. Really? Kirk Cousins? I mean, he hasn't shown me nothing this year. Uh, the only thing he's shown me this year is that he's very smart with his money to get those nice one-year contracts year after year because uh, right now he has not shown me that he can uh, win on the road against a team that's faced very, very, very good opponents. 
Yeah, and I tell you what, when you have a defense with as many holes in it, as many leaks, new looks as the Vikings defense, you better have solid play at your quarterback position on the other side of the line of scrimmage to be able to keep up with these teams. Last week, we saw something happen for the first time in the NFL. Minnesota allowed a rusher for over 175 yards on the ground, and they allowed a receiver over 170 yards receiving. This is not your typical Mike Zimmer defense. Chargers at Tampa Bay, Tom Terrific, and the Bucks laying seven everywhere as I'm looking at the line. 65% of the tickets or the public on Tampa Bay, as you'd expect. Uh, but the Chargers have fared well in this spot over the last few years, and the money is about 70% on the bolts. However, that number, Raphael, sticking firm at seven from what I can see. Yeah, and let's face it, we're probably going to talk about it, uh, Tampa Bay and Tom Brady with public money coming in because of that, what I just said, Tom Brady and Tampa Bay. And that division is horrible besides them. If the Saints uh, lay an egg in two, against Detroit with no Michael Thomas, looks like again, uh, Carolina is Carolina with a bad defense. And let's face it, the Atlanta Falcons uh, should be glad Chick-fil-A is not open on Sunday because they would be upset the way they've been playing on Sundays. Uh, it's just a bad division except Tampa Bay. So we're going to be talking about their public money, I think, week after week after week because I think that's the best team in that division right now. Uh, but I kind of lean towards the Chargers and the Sharps. I, I think the Chargers can make it a close game. Would not be shocked if we see something like a 24-20 type of game, Tampa Bay getting the W. Uh, and and it's, can they run the ball with no, no four net? Uh, with their wide receiver, our running back crew was a little bit light this week, so I think that kind of falls in favor for the Chargers, who have been able to stop the run pretty, uh, pretty well, and, and their secondary is, has not been that bad. So I think the Chargers can cover it. I think I understand why the Sharps are betting them. And and we talked about, or I talked about at the top, that the favorites have been winning at a seventy-two percent clip this season outright, and this looks like teaser special written all over it. People are going to tease down Tampa Bay. I cannot blame them for them. I, I would like to – I mean, that's that's a, a solid teaser play, I think, if you're playing two team six-point teasers. Total's been the big mover in the Bucks game. This was as high as 45. It's down to 42.5 as we speak. I won't be surprised if Kansas City is another popular teaser side. Cam and the Patriots on the road to take on the Chiefs. Chiefs laying seven. Total's about 53. Uh, last check, 63% of the tickets or the public on Kansas City minus the points. Uh, close to 70% of the money or the Sharps on the Patriots, plus the points. New England, this is the third time, Raphael, in 18 years that they've been a dog of seven or more. And they covered the first two times they were in this spot. What about this week, and what are your thoughts on the betting? Year after year, I would tell people never bet against Tom Brady, New England Patriots with Belichick, and I have to flip-flop. Year after year, for the next couple of years, you don't bet against Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. When your fullback scores a touchdown on Monday Night Football with ease, how is any defense, the Patriots, the Ravens, uh, the Steel Curtain in the 70s, going to stop this Kansas City uh, Chiefs offense? It's ridiculous. And that's why we're going to, again, talk about the Kansas City Chiefs public money week after week after week. And if, and if the odds makers don't adjust their numbers with the Kansas City Chiefs and the total, uh, they're going to get burned. You said it with teasers, parlays, suicide, whatever you can do with the Kansas City Chiefs, they're going to be on those parlays and teasers. So uh, it's going to be very interesting. I, here's another one. I kind of like the Patriots plus the points in this one, uh, but I'm probably just going to sit back, maybe have my first cocktail of the week uh, while I watch this game and have no action because I think it's going to be a great great game if i do maybe play maybe do a tickle on the over because i think we're gonna see a lot of offense but i can't wait to watch this. i'm almost like this is a playoff game i can't how excited i am to watch this game it's nice living in your time zone if i say i'm gonna you know have my first cocktail while watching the 10 a.m games as they kick off the <laughs> wife looks at me a little bit funny but you know uh, belichick and reed <laughs> i wanted to mention that when they've matched up they're over eight of ten times when they matched up as head coaches Mahomes, to back your statement about it's just tough to bet to go against KC, 26-12-1 is his spread record. You know how well he just cleaned up again in the month of September, now into October. Uh, Kansas City. Now, here's what got me this close to putting the Patriots on my card, and then I decided I don't need to do this. But Kansas City's defense, 27th in rushing yards allowed per game, 28th in yards allowed per carry, 30th in yards allowed after contact by running backs, so Bill and the Pats, you know what they're going to do. They're going to run the football. They're not going to try to do what Harbaugh did on Monday night 
and throw the ball a little bit too much. But uh, again, it's just one of those spots where I'm with you, man. All those years with Tom Terrific and Bill, I just didn't bet against the Patriots. And even though the spot looks fantastic for New England here, it's just tough to say. When he couldn't say I was wrong, and for us older people, yeah, I was. he just couldn't get it out of his mouth. I'm kind of like that when I try to bet against the Chiefs. But if there was a spot, this would certainly be it. Uh, let's get to our free pick, Raphael. It's the Bills at the Raiders, of course, in Las Vegas, Allegiant Stadium. No weather conditions uh, with, of course, the roof closed as it is every week. Uh, Buffalo inching up a little bit. I'm looking at my screen right now. i got about 15 books in front of me, Raphael, and I see some three and a halfs out there. A lot of threes, but at this point, there are enough three and a halves that if you do want to back the Raiders, you should take no less than three and a half. And there are enough threes out there right now that if you want to back the Bills, you should not lay more than three as we speak. So anyway, both the tickets and the Sharps are about 60% on Buffalo. Public and Sharps in agreement. Raphael, what say you? Yeah, I kind of agree with you on that one. Shop around on who you're going to pick on this game because you said there's enough threes if you like Buffalo and there's enough three and a halves if you like Oakland. You know, it's a heavy-hearted week or, or month for Vegas right now, three years suffering after the horrible shooting. So uh, I, I kind of want to say, hey, Vegas uh, Raiders, can you give us a hug? Can you win another home game for us uh, on this uh, on this game? The last home time home game we saw them when they opened up the Death Star. I will never say Allegiant Stadium. I will always say the Death Star. Last time they opened up the Death Star, they won their first home game to a team that people thought were going to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. If they play like that against the Saints, then I think Buffalo is going to taste their first L. And I think the uh, the uh, I almost said the Oakland Raiders. Then I think the Las Vegas Raiders get their uh, another home W. I'm taking a plus three and a half, plus three and a half at the Death Star. Yeah, you know what? Ruggs is listed as doubtful, but they played without him already this season. Not a great start for the rookie in the NFL. Uh, he looks good out of the blocks, then all of a sudden he's banged up after a game or two. Uh, I have two words for the Bills. Josh, I guess it's five words if you include the the and 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 the two words in both names, but. Josh Jacobs and Darren Waller. The Bills got lit up on the ground last week by the Rams. They got lit up through the year by the Rams tight ends. Buffalo's defense, which was their strength a year ago, a little shaky right now, maybe because of the reasons Raphael mentioned in the open. Uh, but guess what Vegas wants to do? They are the epitome of 2020 smash mouth football. They want to run at you with Jacobs, a couple of running backs that can run at you. And they want to throw to their tight ends, most namely Waller, and they've done it effectively. So I think this is a tough spot for Buffalo, who is right now, their defense, 24th in DVOA. Uh, I'm with you, man. I look at the Raiders, and I'm going to be rooting for Sin City. And by that time of the day, I could have that first cocktail without my wife looking at me funny. Raphael, any closing thoughts? I know we got the Preakness going this weekend. Yeah, I got the Preakness going this weekend, so it should be fun times. I, I can't believe we're talking horse racing in October, and we're not talking Breeders' Cup. We're talking about the, the Preakness. So, yeah, I got horse racing. Uh, I got a, a nice card. on uh, My first six-team uh, six, uh, card, three on Saturday, three on Sunday. Uh, I got uh, some big plays going in college football and, of course, in the NFL. So looking to continue to have a nice start. Uh, of both college and NFL, so looking to keep continue to roll. But I'm I'm excited to watch the I'm, the Preakness. You know me, I love the watching the ponies running around. So it's gonna be fun for me watching Pre the Preakness on Saturday. Yeah, I'll be flipping back and forth between the Preakness and the football games that are going on. And got seven plays this weekend: three on Saturday, four on Sunday. Have my first two team teaser, three star play going in the NFL of the season. So we're gonna jump in there. We've also got a seven star on saturday and a six star side on sunday in the nfl so both of us will be in action and don't forget about that 60 dollar free account if you're not yet a member over at docsports.com just click on the link below the video get yourself set up for the free 60 bucks and then you can use that on any of our daily packages so check that out if you wish he's Raphael. i'm scott we're going with the raiders for our free pick this week we are docsports.com